All right, part two, we are talking about active learning, how to be engaged in your classes through active listening, as well as keeping on top of your grades and knowing what you need to do. Principles of deep and lasting learning found in your textbook on pages 22 to 24 in chapter one are so key to this active learning process. I love it. Prior learning, giving your brain something to stick the new information to will help it stick, right? It's obvious, but most students don't really do that. Prior learning means completing the reading before you come to class. It means completing the homework before you come to class so that when the instructor is lecturing, your brain has something to stick it to. You have questions already developed that you can use as particip participation tools or even just clarification of learning, which in turn which in turn turns into quality of processing, right? You've, you've thought deep about it. You've maybe done some different things to learn about it. Maybe you've read and then didn't really understand. And so then you Googled and then maybe you didn't quite get it. And there was a YouTube video that explained it a little further. And then maybe your textbook dove into a little bit, right? There's all kinds of ways to quality process stuff, especially new hard material. Maybe it's connecting with a classmate because they were in the same classroom and they know what the instructor is expecting. Maybe they understood it better than you. Maybe you understood it better than them and you can help them. There's a lot there to the quality of processing. And then the quantity, just early and often. I recommend the earlier you do stuff and the more often you do it, the less work you have at the end game. So think about the biology class that you came in to week one and took notes right? Hard stuff. Maybe it's a little review at the beginning, but still it's, it's going to be challenging. Week two, you know, maybe week one, you, you review the notes, you, you kind of go in, you're, you're all amped up. It's week one, right? Week two, you take notes in class, you go home, you review week one notes, and then clarify week two notes. Then week three, you, you review week one and week two, and then study for week three, go to class, get new information after class, review week one, week two, week three, put it all together. The next week four, review one, two, three, go into class, do all your reading. After you do that, review week four, review it all together again, put it all together. Think about your study time for finals if you do that. You are not going to have to spend much time on those earlier weeks because it will all be synthesized and stuck in that brain. Um, you'll have to spend a little bit more time on the in-game stuff, but your final prep and that's, that's the way you eliminate procrastination and overnight study sessions is by early and often processing that information and staying on top of it. Staying on top of it also means staying on top of your grades, keeping track of yourself. Your syllabi can help you do that. If your instructor is grading in Canvas, that's awesome. You can grade, you know, follow along with them. We also have a grade check form called an academic performance report. You can find it online by typing it into the search bar of our website. We also have them at the counseling office. It's just a page that you can turn into the instructor and say, you know, how am I doing in this class? Most college instructors don't really give you, uh, you know, feedback on your grades very often unless they're giving you a paperback or something, but not the overall class picture. So that would be an important tool to use uh, just for your own knowledge. But then if you're also part of a special program or if you're on academic probation, you might be required to do that. Connect Columbia has a couple different things in there that can help you um, access your transcripts to know where your grades are, and then degree audit helps you know where you're at in terms of graduation and or what degrees you might be close to or not close to and what's available. So both those links can be found in your Connect Columbia account. Your counselor can help you understand degree audit more thoroughly if you're interested. Calculating your GPA. A lot of students want to know how to do this so they can make sure they're eligible for programs or see where they're at. And it's on page 43 of your catalog. We're gonna dive deeper into that and actually practice it next week, but I just wanted to give you a little uh, teaser, I guess. 
And then you can drop and add your classes. And this is a way to, you know, engage in your own education, right? Take care of yourself. If you need to, if you're way overwhelmed or there's a class that's just over your head, maybe the right thing to do is drop it. I would consider talking to a counselor before you did it, but, um, you know, it is an option and there's ways you can protect yourself, um, with dropping as well as adding, okay. Adding into a class. You do both of them via Connect Columbia, or you can do a face-to-face -face version um, through the admissions and records office um, here at Columbia. Adding classes, you need a four-digit add code that the instructor would provide you if they're willing to add you into the class and or an instructor's signature on an add card. You might need a counselor's signature on an add card if you are trying to take over 18 units um, as overload, or if you are on academic probation of any kind, you need a counselor's signature to get into classes. We do have a thing called waitlist watch. If a class is full, let's say there's 25 seats in a classroom, but 35 students want to take the class, there develops a waitlist. So 25 people get in, 10 people are on the waitlist. Waitlist watch is a cool thing that if somebody, one of those 25, drop from the class, the computer sees the first person on the waitlist and sends you an email to your student assigned email. And you have 72 hours to get the ad code that was just emailed to you and register into the class. The tricky thing with waitlist watch though is that if you do not register into the class within that time frame, you are dropped from the waitlist altogether and number two gets the email with the ad code. So if you get put on a waitlist or if you put yourself on a waitlist, make sure you're checking your student email regularly. And then dropping classes. Sometimes we just have to drop a class. Maybe we're overwhelmed. Maybe it's over our head. Maybe our schedule at work changes. There's all kinds of reasons why people want to withdraw from classes. And a W will typically protect your grade, your GPA. So most of the time it's preferable over just not attending a class. Because if you just not attend a class, what grade are you going to get, right? Fail. But if you drop a class, you might have an opportunity to get a W instead of not attending. So a W means withdraw, and there are two different dates that you hopefully found in your semester calendar assignment that we kind of indicate as important withdraw dates. Within the first two weeks of school, you can withdraw with a no W on your transcript, it means your transcript won't ever know you even attended the class. There's a 75% mark of a class as well, usually um, for our semesters, it's usually in the third month, and that is the W date. So you would get a withdrawal on your transcript, but not a letter grade. And that is usually not a big deal in with a couple exceptions. If you're receiving financial aid, you want to check with the financial aid office before you drop to make sure you're not going to owe money back or that you know what the price is for that if you do. The second thing with W's is that depending on the program you're trying to be eligible for, you want to make sure you're still eligible for it or not missing out. So make sure that you um, have uh, some wise counsel before you just drop um, a class. Okay, so that's dropping versus attending. And then the last thing we're going to talk about in this little section is how to listen actively there are so many things that get in the way of our listening, right? I mean, we are people, we have ears, even people who are deaf know how to listen, right? We are taught how to listen, but many of us don't really know the skills. And so in your textbook on page 158 and 159, it actually talks about four steps on how to really listen to somebody. I listed them out here, but really there are things that get in the way of our listening as well. And what those things are, are prejudging, right? Just, oh, this person, I, I don't like what they're wearing, so I'm just going to, they don't have anything important to say, right? There's all kinds of things that we prejudge about. Maybe we know that person is of a particular religious persuasion. And so we know that we don't agree with them. So we're just going to shut it down or, uh, you know, all kinds of reasons. And then talking, 
Even the best listener cannot listen while they are talking, right? Just be quiet and listen. We can also become very emotional when we are trying to listen. And when you bring in your own emotions to a listening situation, that blocks your ability to hear what a person is saying, right? You got to listen to understand rather than listening to respond, if that makes sense. How do we really know if somebody's listening to us? Most of the time, it's nonverbal stuff, right? They're leaning in, they're looking at you, um, they're not distracted by their phone, right? Um, there's really important ways to let somebody know that you're listening. And this happens in the classroom as well, right? Let's say your instructor is old, <laughs> right? And you're just like, oh man, what does this guy have to say to me? Right? That's a prejudging. Or if you're talking, you're obviously not hearing what he's saying in the lecture. And maybe you have an emotional response to something they said. I had an instructor that I did not agree with at all in so many different uh, personal values, but I still got an A in the class. I was able to shut down my own emotion and learn what I could from the class, figure out um, this is that, you know, next step, how to, how to listen actively. It's just clearing your mind and remaining silent. And your book talks about it too. Like when you shut off that internal chatter, um, you can really open up your mind to what a person has to, you know, tell you about. And in a classroom environment, that is super helpful because you may know about a particular topic, say U.S. history. You've taken it all your academic life and now you have to take it again in college. So you feel like you know it all, but just maybe that college instructor has something to add to your picture in your brain that can help you or um, expand your thinking or your knowledge base. And how amazing will that be? And how sad would it be to miss it because you were prejudging or you just were, um, you know, not interested in learning or you were talking. So when you ask a person to expand or clarify, that also gives them that real good feedback. Like, hey, you know, what did you mean by that? Or can you explain that in a different way? I'm really trying to understand. Instructors love that, right? We can explain things, 10 things, you know, the same thing, 10 different ways. And so we might just be able to help you understand if you ask for clarification. And then reflecting on what you heard, that's kind of the early and often and quality of processing thing of if you're reinstating or restating what you heard as, you know, you can verify the accuracy of what you heard as well as um, even strengthen the relationship between you and your professor or the other students because you're understanding clearly what's going on. So your relationships can also use these same tools, and I would love to hear how you engage with your relationships with these particular ideas. Anyways, here is the active listening part two, and I hope that some of the other handouts and things that I am providing in the next um, page on the module will help expand this learning even more.